Hail, panda wands, and fellow journeymen walking that Orktoberfest path. You ready for some more brutal doodles? Well, here you go. So here I am doing a bunch of sketches of what I think I want to do. Now, I already drew the first one. It's up in the left-hand corner. But I'm going, okay, well, maybe I should draw some more, right? Because maybe there'll be another idea. Well, that's probably a smart thing to do in a lot of, uh, a lot of times. But I usually tend to go with the first thing I draw. I don't know why, if it's maybe it just feels like it's more in the inspired or in the spur of the moment. Now, sometimes you'll work on something, do a few sketches and get some more ideas. But I'm working on an orc. I wanted him to have an ax and maybe holding the head. There's not a lot of, you know, depth in that, though. I think, uh, you know, you could probably get a couple more ideas. But I, I just wanted to do an orc with an axe, and that's what I went with. So I end up going, even though I like this pose here, I should maybe use that for something. <laughs> Never mind what I just said. No, I went with the first thing that I did because I liked it. So uh, I've heard, man, horror stories. Like, what was it? It was one of the Star Wars movies, the newer ones, uh, not the, the real one, <laughs> uh, where they did like 1,500 concepts of one of the new ships, and I just thought that was just silly. That's Nothing needs 1,500 uh, concepts, unless it's maybe like a spaceship to the moon that people's lives are going to be, you know, in, hanging balance on, you know, make sure that the math adds up. But for something like this, you know, first set sketch is usually good to go. But yeah, 1500. I mean, I, I can't imagine they did that for the X-Wings and TIE Fighters. And th those are some of the most perfect ship designs, you know, ever. Uh, unlike the Millennium Falcon, which I don't think is a good ship design. I know you Star Wars fans will disagree, but I, I just thought it was a big, silly looking thing. Yeah, just like a big old Frisbee or pizza tray with like little, I don't know, just never was a fan. Maybe that's what made it cool is it was kind of clunky or, you know, funky looking. But uh, yeah, that's uh, usually what I do is when I'm doing concepts, I'll try to keep it limited. And I try to do this with when I'm working on teams too. It's like, hey, here's an idea. Don't give me 20 versions of it. How about you sketch out the idea and then... If, if you have an, a different idea, maybe do one of those or maybe then, then we'll do a combined together. But the idea of just throwing a bunch of shapes uh, on one s single thing, it's like I, I don't I don't agree that that's the best way to go, especially when you're working, you know, when you have a t you know, you want to you want to work on games. You want to be making a game. You don't want to be noodling on, you know, the one thing forever. You got to you got to keep movement, you know, going. And uh, same with, you know, your personal art. You don't want to get hung up on, you know, sketching out like, oh, this, this belt buckle, it doesn't need 20 designs. Do one. If you're feeling crazy, you could have two. It's round or square or rectangle. Hey, there's three, but just pick one and move on. There's more important things. And there's dozens and dozens and dozens of other pe pieces of art you guys got to do to complete your whatever comic, your portfolio, this and that. So just art is about movement. And I'll even say that too. Like, some of the sketches I do, I really love when they're loose. And then the more I polish them, they kind of lose something. And I know all you artists have, de have dealt with that. It's one of the, th the great things about Frazetta is his stuff was very polished looking, but also very loose. And it had that raw energy. You know, newbie Pandawans, if you've never heard of Frazetta, go do yourself a favor and check it out. He is one of the best uh, and one of the, the you know, founding fathers of, you know, the, the fantasy art genre, or, or at least making it more popular and mainstream. Um, so I had said that in previous video that I would do some, answer some questions. So I got a couple questions and I'm just going to go right in. If you have a question, uh, throw it out there in the comments, you know, uh, or, you know, you could, you can also post it on like, I have a Twitter and Instagram, just Samwise Didier. So you can always send questions there. Uh, but I'd love to keep it in the comments section here. So when I'm, you know, reading the comments and all that on, on, for the YouTube videos, the brutal doodles, I can go, Oh, well, I'm going to save that for next time. You know? So yeah, do that. So one question I got is, do I use custom brushes, uh, for Photoshop? And the answer is yes, but I don't rely on them. Um, I've found a bunch over the years and I've lost them and refined them. Basically what I do is when I get a new computer, I'll basically, if I'm smart enough, uh, I'll find the brushes that I use and bring them over. But most of the time, I'll just go online and, and find out someone who's been kind enough to post their cool brushes. And uh, I'll just I'll just grab those and I'll look through those and say, oh, yeah, I can use that for clouds. I can use that for like, you know, grunge or dirt, not grunge, the music, 
worst type of music around. Sorry, guys. Heavy metal is where it's at. <laughs> and like Lemmy said, we're Motorhead. We play rock and roll. And rock and roll is basically, you know, heavy metal. At least that's what Lemmy says. So I'm going to tend to agree with what Lemmy says. Um, but yeah, I use custom brushes. I'll just find ones that work, but I don't have custom brushes for everything. A lot of artists that I love, they have all these just like custom brushes and this and that. That's great. But, you know, they have brushes, you know, like for, oh, here's, this looks like pencil. This looks like ink. This looks like paint. You know what? I don't really want to rely on that. I'd rather just work in something that where I work in ink or pencil or paint. My digital stuff, uh, it's some people have been very uh, kind when they say it doesn't look like traditional digital stuff. And I take that as a compliment. Like it, it has, I guess, scratches and painterly feel to it. It's not that beautifully polished. And going back to the this sort of, you know, loss of energy sort of thing. Like I've seen lots of beautiful things and they look like movie stills. And that's maybe what, you know, the, the team or the, the art director wanted. But I, I want art that looks like someone drew it. You know, not something that just kind of got generated. And there's a there's absolutely a time and place for that. Um, but for when I draw, I want it to feel like I'm drawing, not like I'm rendering. And if it's too lifelike, I'm just not into it as much. I, I like seeing a little bit of the the cartooniness or the you know the the perfect anatomy that I draw. <laughs> Again, it's suggested anatomy. It's uh you know in the ballpark, but. I'm not looking for realism. If I, if I want realism, I'll, I'll take a photo. I don't. I don't, I personally don't want to paint it. Um, but there's some artists that that paint so realistic and it's so beautiful. And you know, I would say I'd probably rather have one of their drawings than a a photo of you know if someone was doing a portrait because there still is that artistic quality, that essence to it that's still under there. But it's just you know it's not as uh, you know obvious like uh, as it is when you see something that's more cartoony. And that's just what I tend to like to draw. You know, it's just more fun for me. And I don't probably have the skill to draw something realistic. Uh, I would if I maybe put my mind to it. But uh, again, it's just not something that I'd, I'd like to draw. Um, let's see, another question. How did I get into digital art? Uh, I basically learned on the job. First day when I started the day job, I got instructed on how to use Deluxe Paint, Deluxe Animator. You know, we did a lot of... Uh, wore a lot of hats, as they say, right? You know, because we didn't have a lot of artists there. So we all had to do our animations and do our own coloring and do our own, you know, whatever is blocking out and all that. You know, people would help out and stuff like that. But, you know, back in the early days, we didn't have an art director. It was just whatever art looked coolest. And we went with that style for that game. And if this one fit better for the other game, we went with that style. That was the art direction. There was no individual art director. Um, but yeah, basically I learned, you know, the first day there, I, you know, never knew how to do any 3D. So when we started doing our games in 3D, I learned and that's how I got, you know, 3D art into the games. And I didn't know how to do Photoshop or texturing on a, a 3D model. And I learned, you know, basically we had artists. That was a great thing about having a new artist join the team because they would bring in all this new skill set and all this new, uh, you know, technique, and especially if they were like from another country, that was the best because they would bring in all these movies and comics that you'd never heard of. Nowadays with internet, you find all that stuff out or, you know, online music, you can sample everything, YouTube, it's fantastic, but you had to hunt for that <laughs> in the in the old Jurassic period. And that was what's great about when you'd have a new person join the team, artist, programmer, whatever. Um, they always had this new stuff that you never heard of. And it's like, that's cool. And today it happens as well. But you know, most, most, uh, nowadays you can see it, you, you know, find everything on the billions of news sites or the billions of art sites and stuff like that. Um, let's see. I hope that answers the question. So yes, uh, I learned at work. <laughs> um, the, la the next question was, um, someone had asked if I could do some artwork that didn't have lighting from the top left. Uh, I think that's what it was. And so boom, here you go. This is we're doing some under lighting on this one. Uh, so yeah, good. It, was, it wasn't more of a question. It was a statement to demand, and I followed the orders perfectly. Now, the execution and rendering may not be perfect, but at least the order was followed. <laughs> Let's see. Next question uh, was basically asking, you know, can I do a thing about, you know, do something with night elves or do something with, you know, uh, whatever the, the work-related stuff is, you know, Zerg or Protoss or this and that. I would, but this is just me drawing on my free time. Like I, when I, when I am 
not at work. I don't want to be working on the day job stuff. I want to be creating my own worlds and not living in, in I always say other people's worlds. And I did help work, you know, create them, but I'd rather work on something that's, that's, uh, you know, free, like free of all the, uh, you know, constraints, you know, it's like, oh, well, if I drew Thrall, he'd have to look a certain way. But if I just draw some cool orc, then he can look however I want, you know, I can create art however I want. And, you know, that's the great thing about doing personal art. I love, love working on, you know, the Blizzard stuff. But in my spare time, I want to work on the Sammy stuff. Speaking in third person, what a jackass. But on my own stuff, right, I have a saying, you know, don't, you know, don't live in other people's worlds, you know, create your own. And that's, that's what I try to do. Now for Orktober, there's a precedent set, you know, right, we got to make cool looking orcs. But, you know, expect to see over the months, some variety of orcs, you know, some that are a little bit more comical, some that maybe are a little bit more serious, or some that are in, you know, just different styles. That's, that's the fun part about creating, you don't have to live in, in one style. Um, you know, if it's, if it's something for, Starcraft, it needs to look a certain way so it looks like Starcraft. But if you're just making cool sci-fi stuff, then it can be however you want. Um, let's see. So the last question here, it was, uh, and I, I didn't understand. I had to actually look up what it was. What do I do to like induce uh, a, you know, a flow state? And I had no clue what that meant. And so I looked it up, flow state. Oh, cool. You know, doing certain things to get yourself. I'm like, oh, what do I do to get in the zone? Got it. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll put on some music or, you know, documentaries or stuff like that. Uh, but I'm usually in the mood anyways. I'm always like ready to, you know, ABC, always be creating, you know, but I don't think that you need to wait to be in the mood. Sometimes I'm not in the mood and I just plunk down and I'll, start, get to work, right? And I may not, you know, don't wait for inspiration, just get to work, right? You know, you may not have, like I always put up every, you know, year around New Year's, you know, you'll never have enough time, you'll never have the right tools, the situation will never be perfect, you know, you'll never have the right materials, now stop whining and get to work. And I believe that, you know, it's like, if you can get yourself, yourself, excuse me, in a flow state or whatever, or in the zone, do whatever you got to do. But even if you're not in it, Stop whining, get to work, you know, like I, I could take a sick day and not do anything or I could, you know, be sick. I work from home so I can do that and and just keep working, you know, and I'm, I think I'm better for it. You know, I got ahead of the day, even though the day was trying to stop me. I still got ahead. So don't force yourself to be in a, you know, a certain state to work. Just just get to work. You know, obviously, you're going to need some rest sometime and all that kind of stuff. Well, great. But don't, you know, don't wait for the, the inspiration to hit you. Don't wait for the motivation to hit you. Just get going. Start drawing, you know, A, B, C it. So I guess that's where I'm going to lay off. All right. I hope I answered all your questions. A, B, C, Panda Wands. Always be creating. Happy October. Ha <laughs> ha. Work, work. <laughs>